All right, what's up everyone, I'm Faloki, and today we're gonna to be talking about the 2021 Walter Payton Man of the Year, the man who has never had an MVP vote in his entire career, nor has he had an offensive line in his career. The man, the myth, the legend, Chef Russell Wilson. This 2020 NFL season was a weird year for Russell Wilson. He started the year looking like a runaway MVP favorite. He was absolutely dominating the first half of the season, and then everything fell apart. Everything went south for the Seahawks and Russell Wilson in the second half of the season, and he just looked bang on average, just a horrible, horrible display of Russell Wilson's talents in the second half of the season after such a dominant first half. This came mainly due to the fact that teams started to figure out the Seahawks game plan and they didn't really do anything to stop them. The Seahawks didn't change anything and defense just figured us out and it was just downhill from there. Russell Wilson couldn't do anything, teams knew what they wanted to do, the offensive line couldn't hold up, and really this was just a horrible situation for Russell Wilson, but his play really didn't make it any better. Through the first eight weeks of the season, Russell Wilson played absolutely amazing. He completed 183 out of his 256 passing attempts for over 2,100 yards, 26 touchdowns, and six interceptions. He was sacked 19 times, and he rushed for 260 yards. Those first eight weeks for Russell Wilson were absolutely amazing. He was playing out of his mind. He was breaking records for the most passing touchdowns in the first three, four weeks of the season. And I mean, those eight weeks do include the Cardinals game where he threw three interceptions. So imagine if that game he threw like one interception instead of three, his stats would have just looked even better and he would have been even more on pace to win the MVP easily. But then the problems began to arise for the Seahawks offense. Teams started to figure them out. They started to play much better defenses and overall, things just went very far downhill for the Seahawks. After those first eight games, Russell Wilson didn't do too great. He completed 201 of his 302 passing attempts. For just over 2,000 yards, he had 14 touchdowns, seven interceptions. He was sacked 28 times, and he rushed for 250 yards, two touchdowns, and he also fumbled the ball way too many times, six fumbles. So in that second half of the season, it was clear. Russell Wilson just started turning the ball over. He didn't really have running backs for some of those games. Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde went out around midway through the season and then he went into the Bills, he went into the Rams game and he had way too many turnovers and really he just started playing very poorly. The offense wasn't great, the play calling was just horrible. Russell Wilson really didn't help anything with his play. So I mean it's not completely on the play calling, not completely on the offensive line, not completely on the fact that he didn't have running backs. Those are definitely factors but Russell Wilson didn't play well. He started forcing the ball when he didn't need to. He was just, you know, missing some throws as well. So it really, it just did not look good in that second half of the season. He almost had more total turnovers than he had touchdowns. So really, that was just a horrible display in the second half of the season. Compared to the first half, he just was not the same. And of course, in the one and only playoff game the Seahawks had this season, he completed 11 of his 27 passing attempts under 40% for two touchdowns and an interception, which was a pick six, did not play well whatsoever. He was sacked four times. So from the stats of the second half of the season, it's definitely clear that Russell Wilson dropped off in that second half of the year. But what if he actually had the stats of the first half of the season for the entire year? Let's just say, you know, let's make him better than he actually was. Let's say that Cardinals game didn't really happen with those three interceptions. Let's say he had one interception that game and let's take the per game averages from those first seven games and put them in for an entire season. If we were to do this, we would take Russell Wilson's 2,151 passing yards, his 26 touchdowns, and we would take four interceptions instead of six interceptions, average them out for an entire season, and we would come out to an absolutely insane 4,900 yards, 59 touchdowns, and nine interceptions. He would also have almost 600 rushing yards, so this would clearly be MVP. He would have easily broken the single season passing touchdowns record. This would have been absolutely insane if he could have kept up a pace. Even if we would have taken it as six interceptions, he would have had like 13, 14 interceptions throughout the season, which still wouldn't be that bad if he's throwing 59 passing touchdowns. But of course, that's not actually how it ended up playing out. He slowed down, but if he would have kept up the pace that he had through the first eight weeks of the season, insane, would have been absolutely game over. He would have been MVP instead of Aaron Rodgers, but obviously things didn't go as according to plan as that would have been. Now throughout the seasons, there were a lot of ups and downs and the downs were very down. Russell Wilson really didn't play up to his standards for a lot of those games. Too many interceptions. Russell Wilson's normally someone who doesn't really turn the ball over. He makes a safe play and he either makes a huge play or really nothing dangerous is going to be happening. But he had a lot of interceptions this season and there's a lot of things that it comes down to. One, I've mentioned before, he didn't have his running backs for quite a few games and the run game really just wasn't that great this entire season compared to other seasons. His offensive line, just like every other year in his career, has been horrible. He was sacked 47 times this year, which is not good whatsoever. 
I mean, I long the days that we can finally see Russell Wilson go an entire season without being sacked 30 or more times because that hasn't happened in his entire career. If Russell Wilson had an offensive line, he'd probably be the greatest quarterback of all time. Now, of course, that's just speculation because he has never really had a good offensive line. But if he can be sacked under 30 times a season, I think that he would definitely have an amazing season if that did happen. But of course, Russell Wilson didn't get much help from his offensive line. That's nothing new for him. But the surprising thing was the run game didn't really help him out whatsoever. This season, the running backs for Seattle only accounted for around 1,400 yards compared to 2019's 1,900 yards and the 2018's 2,200 yards from running backs. Obviously, this was a down year for the Seahawks running the ball. That comes from injuries to Carlos Hyde, injuries to Chris Carson, but also just we didn't run the ball well. And that definitely comes from the fact that we were really on the let Russ cook train. We were really focused on Russell Wilson throwing the ball and throwing the ball deep. And really, once that started to get figured out, by the time we started going against the great defenses like the Cardinals, the Bills, the Rams, and teams started to figure us out, we didn't have running backs that were healthy. Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde for, were out for the Cardinals game, or everything but the first quarter of the Cardinals game, the Rams game that we got completely dominated, and the Bills game that we got completely dominated. Those defenses figured out what we were doing, and they stopped us really well, and we didn't have running backs to try and combat that. We didn't have running backs to try to make the change, and even if we did have the running backs, we weren't trying to make the change anyway. So this was just a bad season. A lot of things went wrong in this season for Russell Wilson. Just the bad game planning, really no change in how the Seahawks wanted to play. Teams figured us out. When they did figure us out, we didn't really have running backs to try and help make the change. So there were a lot of things that went wrong for Russell Wilson, but it's not all on that. Russell Wilson definitely takes some of the blame. He played like an absolutely elite, superstar, record-breaking quarterback in the first half of the season. But then the second half of the season, he just looked average, if not below average. He was having too many turnovers, wasn't throwing the ball very well, and really, he just looked like a shell of himself. And that came down to him. You know, there's so many things that went wrong for the season for the Seahawks, but Russell Wilson has to take the blame, and he has taken the blame. That's the good thing about Russell Wilson. He doesn't want to make any excuses. Everything that you've seen about Russell Wilson talking about the negative parts of the Seahawks season, he puts it on himself, and he takes the fact that they did bad, it's on him. And that's a great thing to see from him. I think that he's going to come back next season and be at the top of his game. But still, I mean, this season, a lot of bad things happen for the Seahawks as a whole. But a lot of it does go on Russell Wilson as well. This season was definitely a weird season for Russell Wilson. It was one of his best seasons and one of his worst seasons at the same exact time. He was seven yards away from breaking his career high in passing yards with 4,212 passing yards. He had a career high 40 passing touchdowns but he also threw the most interceptions in his entire career with 13. So obviously he had an amazing year when it came to throwing the football, getting yards, getting touchdowns, but he also had too many turnovers. He had a lot of turnovers this season, and that's why it's one of the best because throwing the ball and getting yards, getting touchdowns, he did amazing, best in his career almost. But then, you know, turnovers were the worst in his career. So a really weird year for him. Just the contrast between the first half of the season versus the second half of the season was just absolutely insane. And it just went south so quickly for him. And he was going from amazing to just average, if not worse. So really, this was a weird year for him. And it's really hard to give him a grade for this season. But if I were to give him a grade, it would have to be a B plus. Now, this is definitely not a bad grade. I can't really give him an A because he had too many interceptions, too many turnovers. He had some really great games, but he had some horrible games where he just was not careful with the ball. He was throwing some off passes. He was throwing interceptions. And I mean, there were definitely some really bad games for him. That's why he gets a B plus. I think you could go higher if you kind of overlook some of the interceptions. He definitely had some interceptions that were like fourth down. You know, he has to throw it. He has to try to force it or else. I mean, it doesn't really matter. He's either getting intercepted or they're getting the ball off of a fourth down not being converted. You know, there were some of those. There were also some really dumb ones like Greg Olson having the ball slam off his face and then a pick six. The horrible screen play in the playoffs, which doesn't even go for his 13 interceptions. He should actually have 14 interceptions, 42 touchdowns if you include include the playoffs, but still just not a great season, but not a horrible season. This is definitely a season that he can build off of. He's still an amazing quarterback. There's absolutely no doubt about that. He's going to come back next season, top of his game, probably continue to do better with a new offensive coordinator, hopefully a more dynamic offense and hopefully healthy running backs. Maybe we keep Chris Carson. Maybe we get someone else. I have no idea what's going to go on with that. Hopefully the Seahawks continue to build their offensive line to try to help Russell Wilson. But really, I think this is a year that had a lot of ups, a lot of downs, and hopefully Russell Wilson can build on the ups 
and kind of weed out the bad interceptions and the bad turnover issues that he had in the second half of the season. And I think next year he can come back and have an amazing year. And honestly, that's why I give him a B plus. He could have definitely had a worse grade because the turnovers were just absolutely horrendous. But the 40 touchdowns, him almost having a career high in passing yards is definitely something that makes up for that. The first half of the season, you really can't give him anything worse than a B because that first half of the season was just absolutely dominant. But before this video ends, I just want to focus on one thing, and that's the kind of hate that I see Russell Wilson getting. Now, Russell Wilson is an amazing quarterback, but I see a lot of people just looking at the second half of the season and at the playoffs and saying that he's not even a top tier quarterback. People are putting him in the B tier, C tier now for quarterbacks. Like, I have no idea what people are thinking when they're doing that. Russell Wilson is an elite quarterback. He is in the top tier. He is an S tier quarterback. Of course, the second half of the season, he looked horrible. But Russell Wilson, when it comes to talent, when it comes to ability, when it comes to how dynamic he is as a player, there is not many quarterbacks better than him. Maybe Patrick Mahomes is better than him. Maybe Josh Allen is around the same tier as him. But Russell Wilson is definitely top of the top. There's not really quarterbacks that are better than him. I, I mean, I saw something on Instagram where he was at the same tier as Dak Prescott. Are you kidding me? Dak Prescott? I mean, Russell Wilson is not even close to someone like Dak Prescott. Russell Wilson is a top tier quarterback and the slander that I see Russell Wilson getting because he had some bad games in the second half of the season that mainly came down to game planning and play calling, which teams figured out. I mean, I do not see why people are hating on him so much. And then another thing is the fact that I see a lot of people talking about, you know, suggesting moving on from Russell Wilson, trading Russell Wilson. That's not going to happen, nor should it happen. Russell Wilson is an amazing person and an amazing player. He is basically the entire Seattle Seahawks right now. I mean, for the past few years, he's been the entire Seattle Seahawks. We've had a decent run game, horrible defenses, horrible offensive line for the past few years. Defense looked good this year, but Russell Wilson is basically what the Seattle Seahawks are, build ar are built around. You can't get rid of Russell Wilson, nor should you. He is an amazing person for the community of Seattle. He is an amazing person to be the face of the Seattle Seahawks franchise. And anyone who thinks otherwise is just wrong. Russell Wilson is not going to be moved on from, nor should he be. But I've seen a lot of people basically just disrespecting Russell Wilson. You know, even the potential of people saying we should trade Russell Wilson for Deshaun Watson, not going to happen, nor should it happen. Deshaun Watson is a great talent. He's an amazing quarterback. He's one of my favorite players to watch. But I mean, Russell Wilson is the Seahawks. He is the man for the Seahawks and he should stay the man for the Seahawks. And the disrespect on Russell Wilson is just absolutely baffling to me. But with that, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know down below what your grade would be for Russell Wilson for this 2020 NFL season. There's also going to be a community post on my channel with a poll on it so that you can put your player grade there for him. And it'll be interesting to compare it to everyone else when it comes to like percentage of votes. I'm going to be doing running backs either tomorrow or the day after. So stay tuned for that. But with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Have a great day.